So let's talk about design function and creating desirable consumer experiences. Terence, how do you see the role of design function evolve over time as we see design going from physical to digital? Actually, one of the first 3D programs I ever used was uh, from the sort. It was SolidWorks. And right. that was many, many years ago at university. And I think that just that alone can have a nice journey. Like, mm. you know, in the past, uh, working with 3D and, and design, it was a very much of a solo endeavor. You, you kind of bury yourself in your work and, and you deliver a design at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And, and actually, when you start to work, actually, you, you realize that that's not, that's not really how design is being done. No. And I think what's amazing is that, you know, a lot of software platforms right now has allowed to move away from this solo endeavor kind of mindset to a more collaborative mindset, mm. which I think is so essential for modern design. Because mm. that way you can work across the multiple design disciplines, right? Not just industrial design, surface design, you know, visual design, so on and so forth. And you get the many disciplines of design working together on the same file. And then you work together, not just in design, but outside to engineering as well. How do you get R&D involved in the same file and trying to, exactly. get to work on it at the same time? And I think with this kind of really cross-collaboration and this openness, I think you can really have this deep kind of creativity and, and something amazing can happen. Mm. Yeah. I really believe in that. Mm. And I think as a previous design leader once said to me, uh, design is really a team sport. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's, there's, not, there's no prima donnas no. allowed here. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting take. Mm -hmm. um, so then moving forward, Mia. When you work with organizations, how do you weave in consumer experiences into how a product is then designed? Well, of course, uh, it is all about just bringing those people together who need to work on the product mm -hmm. and understanding uh, the customer problem, what we need to solve for the customers and who they are, and then developing those solutions together and understand if they actually solve the problem and then uh, deliver it and optimize it. And usually it's good if the same people are involved all the way through. Mm -hmm. And that's why we bring people together to cross-functional teams mm -hmm. and keep them stable over time. Mm. So giving the mandate and having them, enabling them to, to work across the product development full process, mm. it's, that's how we need to help them to actually take ownership and bring really great products to the consumer. Mm. Interesting. Yes. And, and then moving on a bit to discussing then designing specifically for disruption here, mm -hmm. Terence. So what role do you think that technology plays in terms of helping designers feel more emboldened and helping them to think, let's just say, outside the box? <laughs> yes. I think technology is a great enabler. It can really accelerate mm -hmm. our learning and doing. And I think that's one of the big benefits of technology for us. And I think, of course, with the pandemic, right. this really forced us to take that ex additional step, right? How do we even collaborate remotely? And once you do that remote step, then the global step becomes easier. Mm. The cross-functional step becomes mm. easier. So I think technology is really important in that. Mm. But I think it, technology also does help us solve two problems. The first problem is how do we learn from, the, from the, our users and people and consumers? I think that's super important. I think technology has allowed us to learn much better much faster right yes i think the traditional ways of of, of learning from the user is you know through surveys or mm. or you know asking their opinion about something mm. but we do know that mm. a lot of how a person thinks is unconscious 95 percent of the way the way brain works is automatic it's it's emotional and you cannot capture that through surveys yeah. so how do we take the next step with technology to really capture all that information Absolutely. from the user yeah to really know how they feel yeah. How, how they think about something. And I think this is something really worth fixating over for mm. designers. Mm. And the second thing which I think is important is about sustainability as well. Mm. How do we start to measure sustainability impacts? I think with technology, we can do a much better job than before where, you know, we are just mainly trying to assume the best or assume the worst. Mm. But with technology, we can really much, we can much, with much more fidelity and much more accuracy calculate right. these impacts, which I think is really, really important. Mm. And then trying to balance those two things with a great business and a great product mm. and bring it to market, I think that's where the balance needs to be done Absolutely. in a good way. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, very comprehensive. Thank you. So moving on then, Mia, I know that you work with visualizations, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, I do. So uh, how do you actually help organizations see the same picture and actually understand each other. Mm. 
And visualization is key in that, of course, mm -hmm. and bringing people together right. and working with it together, bringing maybe data, different views, understanding each other across the organization, and then visualizing maybe the future, the vision, the next step, visualizing maybe complex uh, things happening mm -hmm. and models mm -hmm. to help people see the same thing and talk mm -hmm. about things that are important to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And we use it, of course, a lot like this would like, this is a love the problem. It's what designers are supposed to do. And uh, maybe this one is about leadership theory X and Y. And people bring this uh, back home, a visualization ar around leadership and can talk about it and put it maybe on the laptop. So we can use it in many different ways. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, Terence, moving on to you then, uh, we know that Electrolux is a global company. Um, how is technology enabling you to design better experiences globally? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if we, I like to zoom in a bit on the word technology and focus on material technology because that's something I'm really passionate in. Right. Yeah, because I think materials have really defined the world, mm -hmm. and we know we have whole eras in our history. Mm -hmm. De de defined by materials such as the Bronze Age or the Iron Age. Right. So I think materials has a very big part to play in uh, how we design things. Mm -hmm. I think how things are made of, what things are made of, and how things are made are really key fundamental questions designers need to resolve. And, if, and I think there's a growing gap between that knowledge of how things are made and what they're made of right. and, and people. And I think this gap is, is fostering a negative culture, this, this throwaway culture, right? You get something, you don't really treasure it, you don't really cherish it, mm. and then you, you, you dump it. Mm. And I think this is one of the key things. Uh, building this knowledge of having materials can really help people build this engagement and emotional connection to the objects they own. Mm. So one, I think what's important here is that, you know, there's a very great article in the National Geographic last year that talked about, you know, every year annually, there is uh, 100 billion tons of material that's being right. displaced from the earth. Mm. Yeah, this is just to get ores and to get materials for making our products. And 66% of that is just thrown away. It's mm. irretrievably lost to the world. It's just mm. unusable. Mm. And just 15%, 20% of that is, used, is kept as use, usable goods mm. for us. Mm. And only 10% of that is recycled back into the economy as well. Mm. So the way we live in is kind of uh, wasteful mm. in general. Mm. And I think that's something that I think is a great design problem for us to solve. I think right. this gives us a North Pole, of, a North mm. Star, sorry, mm. of how we can get to a better place. Mm. Uh, people often tend to ask me, you know, what's a, what's a sustainable material? Mm. Uh, but in actual fact, there's no such thing as sustainable materials because every action we do does leave an imprint on the mm. environment and our planet. Mm. It's how we minimize that, that imprint. How do we reuse as much as possible right. and reduce the waste? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. And I also know for a fact that one third of the food that we produce are actually thrown away as well. So there's a lot of savings that we can do there as well when it comes to sustainability. Definitely. Yeah. So moving on then to Mia. Um, so when does the design phase really begin and end in, in, in your uh, perspective? Well, back to this one then, the problem, right. it starts understanding <laughs> the problem yes. of the consumer, the customer that mm -hmm. we want to solve as a business, of course. And as you say, it could be really huge problems, mm. uh, complex ones mm. that isn't easy to solve, but you need to understand them and figure out and break it down mm. to smaller pieces. So you actually can deliver something that solves parts of it. Uh, and once you've done that, you can continuously optimize or you can find new parts of that problem or a new problem. So that's a continual process to understand the problem and continuously evolve and develop new solutions and products. So the design phase, I would say, is uh, never continuous. Ending. It's never ending, I would say, definitely. Mm. And it's something that everyone needs to be part of. Right. It's not a designer job to design things. Right. We need to work cross-functionally mm. and figure things out together because everything that we actually develop will be parts of software, hardware, uh, different mm. materials and different things that needs to work for the consumer mm. and the customer. Absolutely, and, and that's the reason why probably designers need to be involved as early in the process as possible. Well, as definitely, well, right? yes, and work together with other people Absolutely. in a design process. So. Yeah, mm? yeah, great. Uh, so Terence, um, how do you actually create emotional connection with desirable experiences then? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's something that we have studied a lot, and there's a lot of great ac uh, academic work on this as well. So right. I th one of the key things is that we are still physical beings. Mm. We experience the world physically. 
through our senses of you know sight, smell, taste, sound, uh, touch. Mm -hmm. So these are all physical senses that we interact with the world, and it's important that we engage all these senses. Right. And I think that's what how we create emotional connection and experience is really to engage all these senses in a very deliberate, multi-layered way. Yep. Uh, there's a very good uh, author, Charles Spence, that has wrote many amazing books on this. And uh, it's, it's really about how we create this multi-layer experience. And I can give some examples of this, right? So for example, for, for the topic of color, mm. uh, there's many studies done in the past of how much color influences a purchase decision. And through the many studies, there's no fixed number, but it's between 50 to 85%. So that's a huge number. Imagine if, if you choose the right color, you have a 50% chance of getting right. sales. Yeah. That's a huge number, right? Um, another great example is touch as well. You know, when you hold something in your hands, you, you increase the perception of ownership for the user and consumer. And once that happens, the user and consumer is willing to pay a higher price for the object because you have already started this mm. engagement and connection mm. with the user. So this is something that, uh, that we, we know from academic studies and that we know that this is how we create uh, multi-layered uh, experiences. And for sound and uh, smell, there's also an amazing study done on coffee machines. So if, you, if, if the researchers and the and experimenters found that they played a certain sound effect right. of a coffee machine, the experience of the, of the taste of coffee changes, even though you're, you're being served the same coffee. Mm. So the sound and the smell affects the experience. And what this all tells us right, is that how we perceive the world and how we perceive an object really influences greatly how we experience the object and the, exp and the product. Right? Mm. So if we get a very good balance of this, you know, the, the user will actually have a deeper emotional connection right. to the product. Mm. They enjoy and experience the product better. Mm. And that, that creates a, a very good experience. And what's important here is that, you know, in this world, it's not, just, it's not sufficient to, to, to put out a product that's amazingly engineered or right. with all the right features. That's not mm. sufficient anymore. Right. Everyone's doing that, right? Mm. What we need to do is to have also an emotional connection. Mm. And what's, this is, has a big point to sustainability as well. Because, of course, we need a product that can last many years, mm. that you can use it through a, a long time, and it doesn't break down. Mm. Mm. But what's important is that the user needs to feel an emotional connection as well. Because it's, 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 it's kind of pointless if you have a, a product that can last 20 years, but the user only falls in love with it for one month. And after a month, he discards it or, mm. or, you know, or, or dumps it mm. and replaces it with something else. Mm. So, this, so we need both an emotional durability and also a functional durability. Right. So these two things come hand in hand. Mm to have a good sustainable impact and still deliver a great, amazing experience for the user. Wow, that's very insightful. Thank you very much, both of you.